I'm Dr. Richa Purohit. I'm from Fitwell Physiotherapy, Kharadi, Pune. I'm a neurophysiotherapist and have 10 plus years of experience in this field. Today we will be doing a case study on effect of neurodevelopmental techniques combined with progressive Kegels in 36 year old post stroke female. A stroke happens when blood flow to the brain is disrupted, leading to cell damage. The severity of a stroke depends on where the damage occurs and the type of stroke. There are three main types of stroke. Ischemic, which is due to blocked brain artery. Hemorrhagic, which results from a ruptured brain blood vessel. And transient ischemic attack, TIA, which is a temporary and smaller blockage, often referred to as a mini stroke. A TIA can also serve as a warning sign for a potential more serious stroke in the future. Background and purpose of this study? Strokes rank as the second most common cause of both mortality and adult disability globally. The impact of stroke varies widely among individuals with some experiencing more pronounced effects than others. The aim of a physiotherapist is to devise an optimal treatment strategy tailored to each person with the objective of maximizing functional recovery. NDT or Bobath concepts has been recognized as a treatment for a stroke patient with movement dysfunctions and research to find out its efficacy is required to account for its extensive use by physiotherapists. Bobat approach works on the different types of movement dysfunctions and is based on the active involvement of the patients so that they can develop motor control. Manual handling is holding the patient at specific proprioceptive points, for example, joint compression and distraction, so that patients can respond actively to perform functions. Manual handling can be of different types and is slowly removed to make the patient independent in motor activities. This type of therapy incorporates improved functional control and independence. Progressive Kegel exercises focus on major posture, core and pelvic floor muscles and work on the strength and stability of the body. The base of these exercises are correct breathing maneuvers which are otherwise missing in every movement pattern. Its major role is stimulating the vagus nerve resulting in more oxygen supply to all the areas of the body and subsequently relaxing the hyperactive regions. The patient was an Indian female in her late 30s who suffered a stroke while working at home. She fainted and was taken to the hospital immediately. Her MRI suggested signs of ischemic stroke in the basin of the left middle cerebral artery. She had a history of hypertension for the past eight years. On physical examination, the patient was found to have severe expressive aphasia, right facial paralysis, right hemiplegia, and right hemisensory loss. She was unable to communicate and swallow and was disoriented. After medical stabilization and control of her blood pressure, she was discharged from the hospital and referred for physiotherapy one week after the stroke. The passive range of motion in her right extremities was within normal limits, with her tone flaccid. She required two-person maximal assistance for transfers and minimal assistance for static sitting during the early visits. She had no voluntary movement of her right upper extremity. In the lower extremity, she had developed anti-gravity strength at the hip, 3 out of 5, 1 to 2 out of 5 flexion and extension at the knee, and 2 out of 5 plantar flexion, but no dorsiflexion, inversion or eversion of the foot. Sitting balance at the bedside required some assistance. Her condition was explained to the relatives and the need for continuous physiotherapy sessions in rehabilitation was advised. Patient education, therapeutic exercise, bed mobility, balance and transfer training and wheelchair mobility training were some of this patient's interventions. She was referred to a speech therapist. After 12 physiotherapy sessions, the patient was able to increase 
or static standing time from 15 to 20 seconds to 30 to 40 seconds. Her sitting trunk control increased and her bed mobility improved. With one person's assistance, she started to walk and do her daily tasks. Phase 1 focused on patient education and prevention of secondary complications. The importance of using the affected extremity and deep breathing exercises was explained. Two hourly positioning was given. The patient was log rolled on both sides and in the supine position in order to prevent pressure sores. Positioning was done to avoid contractures. Passive ankle toe movement was given in order to maintain distal circulation. Segmental breathing exercises were given for the lower lobe and middle lobe in order to maintain the perfusion and ventilation ratio. Passive movements were given to maintain the range of motion of all the joints. Progressive Kegels demonstrated along with correct breathing. Phase 2 was focused on advancement in Phase 1 on managing the spasticity and improving motor learning. Early mobilization was given and elongation of spastic muscles with sustained stretch through positioning was done. Hand and foot orthosis given. NDT with prolonged pressure on spastic muscle was also given in order to induce an inhibitory effect and slow rocking movements were given to increase the inhibitory effect through adding influence over vestibular stimulation. Proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation was given for the upper trunk to maintain reduced muscle tone. Motor learning was promoted using strategy development, feedback and practice. Progressive Kegels for posture, core and pelvic floor continued. First, the patient was assisted in learning the task. Then the task was demonstrated and then the patient was asked to practice for the same. Phase 3 was focused on advancement in Phase 2 and on improving postural control and functional mobility. Functional training activities like rolling, sitting and bridging were taught. Upper limb PNF patterns were used to enhance the movement. The training emphasized proper symmetrical posture with proper spine and pelvic alignment. Advanced progressive Kegels explained. Sitting progressed from static to dynamic by giving reach outs. Bridging repetitive task oriented movements, walking with a cane, assisted squats and strengthening of lower extremities initiated after gaining complete ROM. Phase 4 focused on balance and gait training, symmetric weight bearing was promoted. The patient was taught to maintain the center of mass within the base of support. Destabilizing functional activities were given in order to increase the difficulty level. Destabilizing exercises included sit to stand, flooring to standing. Dual task training was given in order to improve balance. Locomotive training was given by explaining the patient's normal kinematics and phase relationship in the gait cycle. Assistance was given by the therapist. For gait training, the patient was encouraged to take equal steps and maintain the natural rhythm of walking and speed. Walking in a natural environment was promoted. Ankle foot orthosis was given for stabilization. Practice was given for functional or task specific skills like backward walking, forward walking and side walking. Advanced progressive Kegels continued with more repetitions and strength training using TheraBand and weight. Follow-up and outcomes The patient was assessed on day 1 at the 4th week, 8th week and 12th week of intervention. Electrical muscle stimulation was used to reinforce or activate the weak muscle and relearn the motor. Conclusion the patient showed remarkable improvement in speech, communication and higher CNS functions in Phase 1. Phase 2 showed a significant change in posture and stability. Progressive Kegels along with Bobat gave additional results in Phase 2 and Phase 3. Physiotherapy sessions were continued for 11 months with frequent breaks. The patient started involving herself in social activities like hobby classes and office work.
She is happily continuing her exercises at the home gym and is confidently walking around independently with minimum assistance and limitations in her right hand. Thank you.